All right, so now it's time to assemble the top end. I got a fresh top end here, so piston and cylinder. Um, it was removed from a nearly brand new scooter I put a cylinder kit on. Uh, I'll show you how to assemble the head and hook up all the timing components, put the shrouds on, and get this motor one more step towards completion. So in the past, I've covered this whole entire job, but it's been with a cylinder kit, a Melosi cylinder kit. It's pretty much all the same steps, but we're just putting it together with stock parts. So the first part you want to do is have a base gaskets. Um, they do have categorized base gaskets, uh, four tenths, six tenths, and eight tenths of a millimeter. I find they're almost always six tenths of a millimeter, and that's what's included with the uh, full gasket kit. So um, you could do the whole measurements. They do have all the steps on how to do the measurement um, with the dial gauge, and there's a special block that bolts down, but really not that critical. Like I said, the vast majority of them have all been uh, six tenths. You can even see the gasket has that marked in there. So go ahead and put those in place. There's two dowels that we'll go ahead and set up. And if there's rust on those dowels, just go ahead and replace them. They're not all that expensive. And the second dowel. So whenever you turn the engine over, you kind of want to support the cam chain. So you can go ahead and get approximately the top dead center, which is where the rod is about as far as it's going to go. Right about there is good. And we'll go ahead and set the piston up. So the cylinder kit, usually they include uh, the rings. There's a top ring, a middle ring, and there's a special tool that expands them. I'll pull one ring off just to show you. Pull the top ring off there. These are already installed. So there's some real fine writing that says top on the, cylinder, the, the piston ring and that's the direction you want to face it. Uh, there is a tool that expands them but a lot of times if you're very careful you can just pry them and obviously if you're putting each of the rings on you start with the lowest lower oil control rings. There's also a spring in there. Uh, you can watch some of my videos on doing the, the cylinder kits in the past on how to do it. And you can see there's the word top even on that lowest ring. So the arrow points down towards exhaust. We're going to set the ring and gap for the oil control at the very top. We have the next gap for the middle ring. We'll set that to approximately there. It's not too critical. You just definitely don't want the gaps lined up and typically a Good, uh, good idea to have them on thirds and have the oil control facing up. So here we got the cylinder. You want to make sure this is perfectly clean. Um, you use like a purple cleaner or any type of degreaser. I'm just going to use some brake cleaner because this is convenient right here. Uh, this cylinder has been run, so it has some braking miles. We don't need to hone it or anything like we're putting rings. Uh, my recommendation is just replace these cylinders with the piston sold as a complete assembly. Or maybe this is a perfect time to put a cylinder kit. Um, let's go ahead and clean it up. Put a little bit of oil in there, just a small amount. You don't need much at all. It goes a long way. So just coat that with a fresh coat of oil there. and. I already have one of the clips in, in place, the other one's not in place. And the exhaust, I'll turn it this way because that's the top of the cylinder. So the arrow points down. And these have a pretty nice taper on them, but you do have to like kind of level lever the rings in, kind of just rock the piston in place. And use your nails to kind of um, get the, the rings in place. So it's almost there. The top, the bottom ring is actually the hardest ring, oil control ring, because it's kind of thick. But a little bit of rocking, you'll be able to get it in. Definitely don't want to use gloves on this step because I find you just end up getting the gloves pinched. And if you're struggling with it, sometimes you can just use a little screwdriver, carefully push the ring in. Be careful not to 
crack or chip the rings or if you get them pushed out of the way then you're going to have more troubles and a lot of times just a little bit of tap will kind of send the rings home and the goal is just to get it right where they're just started in place so sometimes you got to start over again and some of the Piaggio the larger bores they do have a specialized tool for compressing the rings it is pretty uh, important on some of those larger bore engines that have really thin rings because you just won't be able to stuff the piston without those tools is, is my experience There we go. So again, the arrow's facing down. A little bit of oil on the skirts of the piston. We'll take the pin, it's all clean, and go ahead and just lift the piston just ever so slightly so we can get this pin started. And we're just gonna get it all prepared and Pretty much everything started. The rings are just barely hanging in there right now, or you know, wanting to come out of the bore. This gasket surface is all clean, so the tensioner goes up. And don't worry about the cam chain just yet. Go ahead and slide that down onto the cylinder, and you can put a small amount of oil inside the wrist pin here. and may just need to rock things around. Again, the, I like using the back of a screwdriver to kind of help things along. There we go. So now the pin's going in place, should slide right in. So we're gonna go ahead and install a brand new wrist pin clip, uh, B015602 is the original part number for the wrist pin clip. There are specialized factory tools that install these, um, but you can do it with a good set of needle nose. You need to have a really nice set of needle nose that will grip that wrist pin clip. And you have the little slot right there. All right, so you hook the clip in where that hole is, or where the little slot is, and then just kind of roll it in place and never lose grip because if you lose grip, the ring will just go flying. So, sorry if my head's in the way. I'm trying to do this at an awkward angle. With, uh, my finger on the clip. And it slid right in. You want to double check it all the way around. Make sure it's seated in the groove. You poke it with a screwdriver. And it looks like it's all the way in there. So at this point, go ahead and rock the cylinder in a little further. And we'll go ahead and pull the cam chain through this side. And at this point, we can push the cylinder all the way Oh, Make sure that wire doesn't get pinched there like it is. That wire out, that looks like that's a pretty easy uh, point to overlook and get that wire pinch in between the cylinder base right there. So now, now it's in place. We can get the cylinder approximately at top dead center. So just by looking at the piston, when it's just about the top and So somewhere about right there is top dead center. So I have the piston nearly flush with the deck of the cylinder. Go ahead and put the guide in and you kind of lift the chain out of the way and it kind of engages with the block there. And while we're at it, we'll go ahead and put the two larger dowel pins that will center the cylinder head to the cylinder here. 
just like that. Then we're gonna kind of uh, jump around. We're gonna go ahead and pull the cylinder out. I already checked the cylinder head, make sure the valves didn't leak and they were still in good shape. There's a single screw here that has Loctite on it. So you have the plate out of the way that retains both the cam bearing and the two pivot pins for your rockers. Uh, we're at top dead center with the cam, everything's like kind of loose. And at this point, you're able to use a pick and push the rocker arm pins out. So the one with two um, adjusters on there is for your intake, two intake valves. Make sure that roller is in good shape. I haven't really ever seen those fail. And we'll do the same with the exhaust. It's just a single pull that out. And the cam will slide out as well. And it's on uh, bearings right here. So you could check the lobes just visually. They look like they're in perfect shape. There's no scoring whatsoever, even though this motor was run low at, on oil at one time. The bearings spin very nice and, and freely. Uh, at this point, you may want to check the valves. I don't see any reason for it. They don't really have uh, valve stem seal leaks, but you could take the whole head apart. Uh, we'll put a little bit of oil on everything. And in the bearings here. And the lobes, will kind of face them down because that's approximately top dead center. And we'll get the cam back in place. It just pushes in place like that. Again, probably want to put some oil on all these uh, rocker shafts here. So have everything well oiled. So kind of just the reverse order. So go ahead and oil those up. And if you can't get these in, you may need to loosen up the adjusters. There needs to be some free play. You're going to want to have blue Loctite on this uh, single Allen screw here. Go ahead and put the plate back into place. I think I got that right. Go ahead and snug that and let the Loctite We'll here, that feels really good. We'll set the valves once the cylinder head's all the way bolted down. I already cleaned up the head. There's no um, uh, spark plug in there. Make sure the surface is really clean. You have a cam chain tensor gasket, exhaust gasket, and an intake gasket, all included with the, the gasket kit. This little gasket here is your copper exhaust gasket. I pried out the old one already and you could just tap the new one in place. Again, just like the seals, you could use a socket to kind of um, send it in place nice and square. Probably should get a little bit larger one, but this, this will do. And it's very soft, the new gasket, so as long as it just stays in place, that's all that matters when we bolt the exhaust in place. It's going to um, uh, keep it in place. So we got the head gasket. Make sure both surfaces are really clean. Included with either the full gasket kit or just the top end gasket. This is the 150 cc uh, gasket right here. And they have the larger holes. So I flipped it 180. So you have the larger holes if you have it. The other way, it's not going to be correct, so go ahead and carefully pull. I try not to get oil on these uh, metal gaskets. And it kind of just sits over those, um, the studs there. Everything's clean on this side. You know, the valves are good. Kind of just keep the chain, kind of using my fingers to hold the chain in place and let that cylinder just drop right in place. You have several nuts that hold the head. And just go ahead and spin them all on to start. So you got the 12 millimeter socket. I'm just doing by hand right now. 
Then you want to have a pretty high precision torque wrench that's designed for lower torques. And we'll set it to, typically you want to go real low if you can. Maybe we'll do five for a first pass. And just kind of go in between them all. So about five foot pounds is all I want. So five foot pounds, five foot pounds, five, and try not to overshoot. And then we'll go six foot pounds, only a little bit more. And that's the pre-torque before we do the angle on these. So they're all right to six foot. Foot pounds. I do have a fancy torque wrench that does torque angle, but we're not going to use that. I just like using one of these. And it's plus minus five degrees. You want to add 270 degrees to each one of these. And typically I recommend doing 90, 90, 90, 90. So three sets of, of 90s all the way around. And it's pretty simple if you just have a ratchet. So, you know, the ratchet kind of we're right at 12 o'clock and we'll go to three o'clock and that's 90 degrees. So 12 o'clock to three o'clock. And I'm doing that on each one of them. So that's our first round of 90s. And then second pass, so we'll do pass number two. Make sure it's all the way on there because you want to. So I'm looking directly down at it so I know that I'm doing 12 o'clock to three o'clock, which is 90 degrees. So now I've done two passes. Now we're gonna do the final pass. And it might be a little harder because now we're getting up there into torque. Make sure the socket's on there. There's 90. Kind of do it with some authority here. And I'm keeping pressure on that wrench so I don't slip. And the last one. There you go. That's the final torque for this, um, these head bolts right here. And then you do have the pair of cam tunnel screws right there. Eight millimeter. And not as critical, but you could go about seven or eight foot pounds on each one of these. And we know that the piston is very close to top dead center. Sometimes I do make a mark on one of the fins of the fan and also the cover. There's not really any other timing marks on these. Um, if you do lose track, you could always sight down the piston or even set up a piston stop um, and kind of feel when it's right at top dead center. So right when it feels like it's falling and then go the other direction and right when it falls. So right about there is, is right where you want it. And I would suggest marking the, the fan blade with the the case cover so you have a reference for where top dead center is. So here I have the cam sprocket. There's a little arrow and that's gonna line up with this little mark. And it should be really close if we got the piston at top dead center. Um, so right now I'm a couple teeth over. Probably, let's see, I might be able to go one over. And you wanna get this Accurate, there you go. It's pointing exactly right at that, that uh, 
spot right there. And sometimes you got to go reach back there and turn the cam just ever so slightly to get everything to line up. So make sure the large holes kind of facing there. So you have the, the threaded hole, the pin. Um, if it's out of order, you might have to push the piston all the way down and flip it 180 because you're not at the right top dead center for the, the cam. So we go ahead and get that all lined up and just give it a try. So there's the arrow, it's lining up right there. I'll go ahead and push and it's nearly right on there. So pretty certain I have it all correct, correctly set up. Um, you could also just kind of rotate the, and double check the piston because if you look down there, if I go one tooth off, the piston's gonna drop or if I go one tooth in the other direction, the piston's gonna drop. So you gotta take your counterweight. Um, Again, I showed you the counterweight. I am going to replace it because it is missing this little tooth here. I don't have that part. Uh, there's three different classes of the counterweight. There's a number three on there. Uh, that's the clearances of how it's set up. But I'm just going to go ahead and install this just to show you how it's set up. So, so we'll go ahead and put that in this hole. And then you also want to hook the sprocket right there and the counterweight it normally would be in between here. I'm gonna go ahead and replace that part. I don't have it. And the whole assembly is uh, retained by this little uh, clip right here. So go ahead and put that in place and it lines up with a pair of the holes here. I'm putting the two Allen screws. And so this is the, the normal return position for that. And at this point, you could usually just hold the fan these don't need to be torqued all that much, about three to four foot pounds if you do want to use a torque wrench. That system's all working right there. Um, at this point, you could put the tensioner in place. That's on the top of the motor. You have a gasket for the cam chain tensioner. It sits right like that. The cam chain tensioner, is, it's been reset it's all the way pushed in just to show you if you do need to reset it push it out and the spring is missing this point and go ahead and drop that in place you have two really short screws that hold that uh, tensioner Go ahead and tighten both of those. You have the O-ring, the tensioner cap, and this little spring. And it, you can hear the whole setup ratchet. Go ahead and put the O-ring on there. You may want to put a little grease on it. And just thread that in there. And be careful, that's a hollow uh, bolt right there. So you don't want to over tighten it. Just tighten enough to seat the O-ring, 10 millimeter socket. At this point, I like to put tape over the intake manifold, or you could just shove a, shove, shove a rag in there just to kind of keep it um, from any debris from going inside the cylinder. So at this point, we'll go ahead and set up the valves. All right, so all the valve adjusters are loose. Uh, the spec, when it's a top dead center, cold is 0.08 millimeters or three thousandths of an inch. And typically, you could just get them all closed by just hand threading the adjusters. And we'll just do that on all of them for right now. And you could do this with like a little uh, eight millimeter open end wrench. You got the adjuster. 
I got the peeler gauge that's fitting in there real nice. Or you could use uh, these nice Motion Pro um, tools right here. They got a little little square and the eight millimeter that goes on there. So you could kind of feel, hold that, hold the adjuster and then lock the lock nut down. And that slides no problems. And that one slides with ease. If you put the um, four thousandths, it'd probably be a little on the tight side. And just do the same with all of them there. So when I gotta go around a little bit, there we go. Slip a little there. You can hear the clearance just by tapping it there. Sometimes the exhaust I like to go a little looser because they do they do run a little tight. So you can even go four thousandths. So I'm on the looser side of that clearance. And it's a nice loose um, three thousandths and I probably get the four thousandths in there. So that's fine. All right, so we have the valves all set and the counterweights all in place. You can see how it kind of operates when it's at top dead center still. Uh, the spring, it's kind of hard to see it in the camera, but it hooks right there on the edge of the counterweight and it also hooks inside one of those holes and there's those two bolts holding in place. So all that's all set up. Everything's good here. So at this point, I think we're ready to close up the motor and put all the covers on. Uh, one thing that's a good idea you could use assembly lube on the engine. Put a small amount of oil just on the valve train. You don't need much at all because there is like a little pocket for the oil in there. And I still don't have a spark plug in there, but that's probably more than I need. But you know, once the oil pump starts pumping, it, it's pretty quick. A lot of people think, oh, it takes minutes for it to prime everywhere. Uh, no, it's pretty in instantaneous usually with the oil pump priming. So we'll get the valve cover on. A couple things with the valve cover here is there's more than just the valve cover gasket. So you have this breather cover right here and it's held by the three Torx screws, T25 right here. It's a good idea to replace the O-ring. So part number on the O-ring is 487989. And as you can see, it's pretty flat. So get that old O-ring out of there. You know, it's had nice and flat profile. That's not the way it should be. It should be a nice round one. And sometimes those tend to start leaking. So you get the O-ring, it's kind of that square shape. Have uh, your Maxima, any type of grease, assembly grease, just you're pretty much putting grease on it to kind of hold it in place. Put that uh, right in the, the groove there. And we'll go ahead and put the cover. So that has that little spark plug holder right there. And that one I'm not going to tighten all the way for right now because you got to slip the wire underneath it. Let's do something like that. And obviously it's a little easier when it's on the actual engine. I'm kind of doing the order of operations a little off here, but. I'll do the final tightening once, it, once it's on the, installed on the engine there. Go ahead and turn the engine so everybody can see what's going on. So you have the valve cover. There's a spark plug well right here. Pretty important you put the gasket. That's included with the gasket kit. So that just sets right in there. You probably don't really need any grease. Just pops into the well where the, the spark plug hole passes through. And then you have the shaped O-ring. This is the updated design. If it's a newer style, it's going to be a brown O-ring. The original ones were like a black O-ring and they tended to shrink up quite a bit and uh, you end up with valve cover leaks. That's on those early uh, 2015 model years. And it's molded pretty nice where it sets all in place, but still want to use a little grease to kind of hold it in the four corners there. And at this point, you can see that grease in place. You flip the cover over and it's not going to drop out. So. Go ahead and put the cover on. Uh, take these screws, I think they're about 20 millimeters long. 
I'm just getting them, getting them started at this point. And just kind of going between all the fasteners here. And giving the final little pinch here. So about seven and a half foot pounds if you're going to use a little torque wrench on here. Uh, still don't have the spark plug in there, just keep that in mind. Uh, there's another packing that goes around here and it's, it keeps the air and the vibration away from the, the shrouds for the cylinder and cylinder head. The part number is 879479. Usually this could be reused because um, it's not necessarily sealing anything, you know, except for the, the air and keeping the vibration. But over time in the heat cycles, they start to get pretty hard. So not a bad idea to replace it. But you can see it kind of just sets on that groove right there. So at this point, we'll start putting the, the covers on. I have a little rag in the intake with the gasket just to kind of remind myself uh, where that all goes. This tensioner's all tight and in place. So we know we're, we're set right there. And you can see this little wire with a grommet and that's for your um, the oil pressure light and actually passes through this upper upper cylinder shroud here so keep in mind i don't have the temperature sensor in place that threads in right there and then we'll take the the lower half which goes like this I'm trying to do this reverse i'm kind of on the wrong side and they, they have those little tabs that snap into place. It takes a little effort to get them to snap because I even remember when you take it apart, they're stuck in there pretty good. There we go. And the packing's all in place all the way around. Lines up with the screw holes here. There's a couple screw holes. Don't want to forget about my uh, breather here. I know that one's loose, but we'll come back to that. And at this point, we need a couple of the different screws. So go ahead and locate these three longer screws that have like the really coarse threads. Use just a regular Phillips, and that's what kind of holds the upper shroud to the lower shroud. Let's start with the one near the gasket. And a lot of times with these kind of screws that are coarse threading into plastic, sometimes you go backwards and then right when it clicks down, that's when um, it will thread into those original threads because when you're threading a self-tapping screw into plastic, you don't want to be cutting new threads. And I know there's one on this side as well. So pretty much the same technique. So I have the coil installed. A lot of times you gotta pull the starter back to install the coil. Two bolts that hold it right here. The wire routes up to the zip tie that's on the top of the shroud. And then the little clip that was on that breather. So now I have the spark plug cap all ready to go. Take a CR8EB NGK spark plug. We're gonna start with a brand new one. It's brand new, the gap's gonna be perfectly adequate. You don't need to mess with that. A lot of times you do more damage than uh, needed by regapping a modern spark plug. Um, so I have a 5.8 spark plug socket. Nice thing when the shroud is off, you could actually see thread in. So I've had a lot of customers, sometimes they do their own work and they end up cross-threading a spark plug. So uh, always do that by hand. Kind of want to have a good feel to it. You don't need to put any anti-seize if it's a new spark plug. So it's all the way bottom out. Now you can take a, a ratchet and just give it about another quarter turn and that's all you need. So the spark plug cap, it's pretty unique to the Primavera. It's kind of all rubber. They're pretty reliable, but you do want to make sure it snaps in place. There it is. I kind of felt it snap and it's in there very, very tight. And that's a good thing. So I don't think there's any issues with that. The fan cover's all on, or the fan's installed. There's our fan cover right here. Um, it's got this little uh, cavity for this oil pressure sensor and cap. Make sure that wire is connected. 
So at this point, go ahead and you kind of, um, it's a little lip where this cover kind of catches underneath. Sometimes you got to move things around to get this cap to go into place. And that all, all installed. There we go. And I'll start with these last two coarse self um, tapping screws for the plastic. So one right there top and then there's one down down lower here and that last little hole right there is for the O2 sensor on the exhaust system so we have these last three fasteners right here they thread into the case I think it's a four millimeter allen so get them all hands started by hand here. So at this point, we're at the milestone where the motor's pretty much together. I still have the transmission to go. But before you get too far, this is always a pretty critical time. You just want to put oil in it while the motor's out because once you put the motor in, there's a possibility that, that you may forget to put oil in it. So it's going to take probably a little bit over a liter. Right now it's got a dry dipstick, uh, nice and easy to fill when the motor's out. So put the 5W40 engine oil in here. And obviously once we have the motor running, we'll do a final check and do a little top off if needed. But right now I probably have 900 cc's in there. Definitely enough to start the motor. Uh, actually you could use more. So. Might as well bring it up onto the dipstick because usually it's going to go a little lower once it gets distributed throughout the motor. The capacity is actually a little higher uh, when you rebuild a motor because there's a lot of cavities inside the engine that you can't drain all the oil out unless you take the motor apart. There we go, now it's showing up on the dipstick. So we got a couple screws left here. I have the three screws for the intake manifold, two screws for the air box with the washers and such, and then the springs. And last but not least, there's the castle that's going to go over the, the center uh, wheel axle nut. And we'll come back to that once, we're, um, once we get the motor in, because that's the easiest time to torque that. And same with installing the center stand spring. Once the motor is mounted to the scooter frame, it's a lot easier to install those parts. So there you have it. That's installing the top end. Uh, look out for the next video. I'm going to assemble the transmission and then install the motor into the scooter and hopefully it starts right up. Pretty certain it will. I'll uh, see you in the next video. This is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. Of course, if you're doing this job on your own, check out the Scooter West web store. We have nearly all the parts in stock ready to ship to do tackle a job like this. Um, or maybe this is above your league and you're just watching this, uh, give us a call. Uh, we may have a whole motor as a replacement for an option or call our dealership. We got a brand new scooter. Start with a brand new scooter. Yeah, it might cost you more, but you're starting fresh. See you on the next one.